I called the nurse. Yeah. I'm like, why is the baby breathing like this? And she was like, I'm at a missy tree. Mm. As in, even me, I don't know why. Why is? And she's also asking me, so why is the baby breathing like this? So the I'm baby like, was struggling. You're asking, to yeah. The baby yeah. was struggling to breathe. She's like, I, I don't know why the baby is breathing, breathing like this. And the doctors are not around. It was mm. at night. Mm. Kampua, I would look at that baby. I, I think she was going, and I would tell God, mm -mm. Mm. you know those ones you can't pray. Yeah, I would just tell God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That, those were my prayers that time. I would tell God. Mm -mm. Hey everybody, welcome to Being Kambua. I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Um, I love this family, this growing family of Being Kambua because as I promised you, we will continue to just diversify our stories and, and show you different paths to motherhood, different experiences in motherhood. And I love the amazing people that I've gotten to meet, especially women, because um, it's women who are heavily centered around the conversation of motherhood. But from time to time, we lean into the men because they are also very important in this conversation. But today I bring you um, a lady, a woman that I, uh, she means a lot to me. I got to know her from, we were in the same church uh, at some point. I grew up at Parklands Baptist Church and that's where I know her from. She's a mother of two. She is, uh, she works in administration. She's been in administration for over a decade and just an altogether gentle and really amazing person. I'm so happy to have Faith Mutuko today. Hi, Faith. Hi, Kambua. <laughs> today you're hanging out with me in my element. Usually to Nakwanga, to hang out in a different space. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. It's but good to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. You look lovely. Thank you. Mm, how are the babies? The babies are good. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So I want us to, we're, we're just going to do a, 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 a nose dive into it. We go right mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know, did you ever like uh, when, you know, you became an adult, did it ever cross your mind that I would be a mom? I want to be a mom. Is it something you wanted? Or are you those people who are like, ah, I don't know if I want to be a mom. What was it like for oh. you, for Faith? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Actually, I looked so forward really? to having this like a packed family. Yes. Yes, and I was so ready. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I knew at some point I'll have a family. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Many children. No, or... no, not many. Not many. Okay. <laughs> Max three. Okay. But thank God I have two. You have two. You yes. have one more to go. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm so done. No, I'm you're so done. done. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. So, um, so when did you first find out that okay, I'm going to become a mom? Um, I won't say it was planned. Okay. It's those that happen, okay. and you realize, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, the month has come to an end yes. and nothing is showing up. Mm -hmm. And of course, so you go and do your test and yeah, it comes yeah. out positive. Yeah. Yes. Are you excited? Were you shocked? I was shocked yeah. at some point because I was not prepared. Mm. But later, after a few nights, mm -hmm. those you know those sleepless nights. Oh yeah. 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 You get to say yes. Yeah. It's gonna happen, mm -hmm. and I'll be ready for the journey. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, did you start going to? Did you start seeing a gynecologist right away, um, or what did your journey look like? Actually, it was so strange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one. Um, I waited until six weeks. Okay. Six weeks, and uh, I remember I checked in at some hospital in Nairobi, and after getting, being given, being told what supposed to be done. They told me I have to do a scan. Yes. I had to do some tests and I asked them how much will that cost? They told me like around 11k. Wow. I got so shocked. Yeah. I'm like, is pregnancy this expensive? <laughs> and you've just started. <laughs> I just walked out and I had opened a file. <laughs> okay. I walked out and I took a matatu and went to town. <laughs> So you were this like, no, stress. I'm, I'm yeah. not doing I, I'm this. I'm like, oh my goodness, is yeah. pregnancy this expensive? Yeah. I just thought, actually, at some point, it's free. Those clinics are free. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but at least after some time, I got to book an appointment mm -hmm. in a different hospital. So now in yeah. that hospital, I left that file. Okay. I believe so they, they still, still have, have a file there. <laughs> I believe they still have it. That file you mm. opened many yes. years ago, she's here. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. So then after, now you went to a different hospital, yes, you were able I, to start. Correct. Now. Actually, I didn't go to a hospital. I saw a private guy now. Yes. Yes. Who, okay. who she worked with me through the pregnancy. Yeah. It was such a smooth. Really? Oh, it was so smooth. No honeymoon, morning sick. Honeymoon. Zero. Zero. You're God's favorite. I sewed my bum. And I was like, oh my uh, goodness. I think when I said yes to it, yes. it really helped me. Yeah. Yes. It oh helped me goodness. with the work yeah. and I enjoyed every other part mm -hmm. of the process. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure there, there's a, a pregnant woman listening to you mm -hmm. and they're like, eh? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was even asking people, eh, this, this, they're called what? Morning sickness. Morning sickness. I thought people pretend. Yeah. I was like, hey, me, I never used to have any. Wow. I was, I would eat, I would walk, I did a lot of walking mm -hmm. and it was so smooth even until the last day. That's beautiful. Mm. Did you want to find out the gender of your, of your baby or did you want a surprise? No, I wanted to. You wanted to know? Yeah, because okay. there's what, that which I wanted. Yes. And apparently after checking turnouts, I, I don't know what happened when they told me mm -hmm. the baby I was expecting and the doctor was like, ah, you're not excited? Yeah. I'm like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yes. It's okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I needed to know. Yeah, yes. so that you can plan. Yes, so that I could plan. So I'm mm. going to guess because mm. I know what you ended up having. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to guess that you wanted a boy. Is what your, correct, was your initial correct. Desire. I even had the name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's... that's so important for you to say because mm. sometimes we also guilt ourselves as moms. Mm. It's not that... It's not that if you get a girl, you're not happy. Sure. It's just that, you mm. know, it, I, you had a desire Correct. to have a boy. Yes, yes. And, and then you're told you're having a girl. I'm having a girl. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've grew up. All my siblings are girls. Mm. So I wanted uh, like a son yes. to, to just blend the family. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But I, either way, I was so happy. Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you, you have this honeymoon pregnancy yes, that correct. most women are just so jealous mm -hmm. of and cannot relate to. <laughs> You're glowing yes. and loving um, it and you um, go all the way to the end. You dress up, uh, you know. Yeah. I felt so nice. Yes. yes. And everyone mm -hmm. just uh, pampering you, spoiling yes. you, your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how far did you go? You went to the very end? Yes. Oh. I went to the very end, actually mm -hmm. up to... 40 weeks. 40. Yeah. Wow. It until 40 weeks. Yes. Wow. Actually, when the baby came, I was on my 41. Starting your 41st week. Yeah, first, first week. Allah, this baby did yes. not want to. Mm. was just happy in there. She, she was so feeling so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, when did you know that, okay, baby is coming? What happened? Tell us about that day. Oh, that day I just woke up. And actually, it was a last day, like mm. today. Mm. And I just woke up and I was feeling some cramps. Yeah. And now I had a neighbor mm. whom we had to walk the walk together. She was also expecting. Yes. Actually, our babies share, or closely share their birthdays. Mm. And I informed her and she was like, oh, I'm so excited for you. Oh, yes. my goodness. Okay, let me come, let me come. And she came mm. and she told me, so how are you feeling? Let me check with my friend who is a doctor. Then when she checked, she was told, um, I'm still far. Okay. We just do a few walkings, walkings and chill a bit. Yes. So we agreed to chill mm. for the day. Okay. And I was just okay. Mm. And until now, we decided to check in, in the hospital in the evening. Okay. And... When we went to the hospital, they checked on me and they were like, oh my goodness, you've not even dilated. <laughs> Even a little bit. <laughs> I was not even one centimeter <laughs> after all those cramps. Oh dear, yeah. And I'm like, so now they had to make a decision mm. whether to admit me or to send me back home. Okay. And But later they decided to take me in. Mm. And I spent that night mm -hmm. in the hospital. Mm -hmm. No much pain. Yeah. 
there was no much pain, mm -hmm. but I would walk a lot. You know, those ones you were told, just keep walking. Yes. And you see some mothers coming and they just give birth. Yes. And you're there, you spend the whole just night walking. <laughs> you're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> when, what time does it happen? Yeah. And um, I spent the whole night. You, you see, I'd already started during the day. Yeah. And again, here it's a whole night. Mm. I think at some point I slept. Okay. I don't know what they did to me. Yeah. Maybe they induced me and I just left. I don't know. Mm. Uh, so again, it's another new day. Wow. We wake up with the same routine, walking up and down. Yes. Because that hospital had upstairs, downstairs. Yes. And I remember a friend of mine who is not here now, mm -hmm. she came and helped me walk a lot mm -hmm. until around three during the day. Mm -hmm. That's the second day. And yeah. I, I met a lady who was my friend from church mm. at the hospital. She mm -hmm. was also in labor. Yeah. So we could check on each other. Yeah. Every time you have those back pains, yeah. I would go to her room, I check on her, I rub her. Oh. <laughs> it was such a nice experience. Yes. I remember at some point we were rubbing her with a hubby yeah. because she was in so much pain. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but anyway, mm. so I at some point around three, Going to four, yeah. I see her walking okay. to the labor ward yes. so with the nurses. And I'm like, Liz, you've gone to give birth. Yeah. I'm like, no, she told me they're just going to check on me. Okay. So I told the nurses, even me, I want to be checked. Mm -hmm. oh, they told me, okay, once we are done with her, yes. we'll call you. Okay. So they went, she never came back. Oh. But later they came and called me to yeah. check me with her alpha I had dilated. Mm -hmm. And when they checked, Mm. I was at five, oh. at five centimeters. Yeah. But now this time, the baby had got a distress. Mm. Yeah, actually they say, you know that greenish yeah. fluid? Yeah. When they checked, the, the, the hand came out yes. green and yeah. they were like, what? Did anyone tell you about if the water changes to green, what happens? Mm. I was like, no, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So they told me the baby is in a distress and you need, to, this is an emergency. Mm. Now, that time, my friend also, they found the, the child, her head has, had started enlarging. Oh she was also in a distress. So mm. they had two emergencies. Okay. So immediately now they broke my water mm -hmm. and it, that was the most painful experience Oof. I've ever had. Yeah. My sister tells me she came to check on me and she found I turned blue. Yeah. I was Cause blue of because of the pain. It was so painful. So now because they had another immediately they had and they could not at that point they could not feel the it's called what? Mm. The heart rate okay, of the baby. Yeah, the heartbeat, yeah. The heartbeat, mm. yeah. They could not feel it. And mm. they immediately put me on some IVs to yes. boost to boost their to boost the heart rate yes. and um, yeah, I was in another world. Mm. I was in a very, very bad world and mm. I had to wait because the doctor now had to take care of the other lady. Then they came to take me at around, took me to theater at around seven. Mm -hmm. Seven, of course, I was in so much pain. Yeah. You know, there you yeah. laid on the bed and you told, Mom, sit there, we yeah. do see you. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm in so much pain. You, well, you, have, you were having contractions yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know whether there were contractions or what, but yeah. I was in so much pain. Mm. But later they did the surgery. They, and I remember when they took the baby, she cried once. Okay. She cried once and that was it. Yeah. Of course, they took her to clean her up, and but I was my eyes were so open because I had this thought of I might they might go with my baby. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be alert. Yeah, I was so alert. I was so alert, and I told them bring my baby. Yeah. They brought the baby, and now they took us to the recovery room. Okay. Yeah. Now it was that was it, and after that I could the baby could not latch. Mm. She could not breastfeed. Yeah. We would try and she could not breastfeed. Yeah. So I told the doctors, this baby is not breastfeeding. They're like, ah, she will learn. She will learn, you know, first time yeah. babies, they're just, she will learn. And that is the third, the second day, the third day, she's still not breastfeeding. Oh, they have not given dear. her anything. Oh, no. And um, 
who got so concerned, but they told me because, and you know, because you're a first time mother, they always think, um, you're making you a big make, deal. Yeah, mm. why, why can't you relax? Mm -hmm. These things will fall into place. And it didn't happen. And they, the, that day they disturbed me. Okay. Still when the baby was not breastfeeding. So this baby for three days for has, three not days breast has not fed, breastfed. And you're being discharged. And I'm being discharged. We get home and I was so tired. And I don't know, the baby got fevers. I didn't know what fevers were. Yeah. I just knocked out from my seat and yeah. I remember that night, I think I just knocked out holding the baby. Yeah. Waking up the following day, she's just there and no movement, nothing. So this friend of mine, my, who is my neighbor, mm. I tell her what is happening and she came in. Yeah. She came in and that time she had given birth like a day mm -hmm. before. Yes. So she come and she also went through CS. Okay. So she tells her, Abby, just hold my hand, oh. take me down. I want to go and see Faith. Yeah. And to Faith, they call me and Faith because of the kids. Yeah. And when she came, she found the baby was a ah, fever. She came with a thermometer. Mm. She found the baby fevers were too high, yeah. around 40. Oh my gosh. Around 40. And she looked at me and like, Faith, we need to take this baby to the hospital. I'm like, okay. So we took, it was at night. Mm. So we took the baby and that time, because the only thing was in my mind was the same hospital where I gave birth. Yeah. So I, they told her, they asked me, where can we take the baby? I mm. told them, yeah, let's go to that particular hospital. Yes. And when we went there, they told us, um, they didn't have uh, mm. a pediatrician. Okay at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we, they sent us to another hospital. We checked also, they didn't have a pediatrician until we ended up to Gertrude's. Yes. And Gertrude's now, you know, the, at this time, the baby is still not breastfeeding. Yeah. That time my boobs are so engrossed yes. and they are so painful. Oh, I can so we stayed there for a night at around 3 a.m. So when we got to Gertrude's, they said the baby had an infection. Yeah. But they couldn't tell where the infection was. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so they had to do a few tests. One of them was urinalysis. And now since the child was not breastfeeding, no urine was even coming out. Yeah. So they put that, it's called catheter. Catheter, yeah. catheter. And they couldn't get anything for like three hours. Oh my God. We waited there for like three hours, they couldn't get it. So they decided, they told me, these small babies, it's very hard sometimes to get the urine. Mm. So we'll just remove and see, the next step. Okay. So when they were just removing, they got a drop okay. of the urine. Mm. So they were like, oh my goodness. So we can use this drop yeah. to do the test. And when they checked the test, they saw uh, they were like, ah, this baby is not in a good condition. Mm. They checked her sugar levels and they were not reading. Mm. The sugar levels were not even reading anything. You, have you ever seen a spoiled calculator? Yes. The way you write some things like Errors. H, I don't know, yes. incomplete. Yeah, that's how we were. And they were like, immediately she was low on oxygen. Things just changed, turned around, and they had to fix the child on oxygen. And mm. at that point, they told me this baby needs admission, mm. but the, our, all our beds are fully booked. Yeah. We are full, where else can we refer you? Mm -hmm. I told them, the, me, in my mind, it's just back to that hospital. That hospital, yes. Just that hospital, because I knew, of course, I'm due for at review. Yeah. And I told them that hospital, and they were like, okay, fine, we'll seek referral. Yes. In the meantime, she has to be on oxygen. Yes. And you will even be going with an ambulance. Mm -hmm. I told them that is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was such a process until in the morning, mm -hmm. that's when we were referred. And now we go, when we got to this hospital, they were hesitating to, to receive, yeah, to yeah, receive to us. Mm. Because I, what we didn't know is when they saw the condition of the child, mm. they didn't tell us that they didn't have the capacity to handle mm. such a condition. Mm. And 
Later, they told me to go and open a file. I went, I started the process. When I was just about to finish, they called me back again. You know, now the child is still in the ambulance. Yes. They are like, oh, what, how did this child get to this point of, mm. I, did, I don't know what they had seen. Mm. And I told them, is the baby okay? I told them, no, she's not okay. Okay, fine, just continue the process. Okay. So I went back and opened the file. Of course, now they took the baby and we were taken to a room. Mm -hmm. And that room, we were just the only one. Yeah. And they started the, when the doctor came, he said, because of the low sugars, they said the baby had diabetes. Wow, okay. They start the process of putting, giving her insulin. insulin. They would put insulin, the sugar levels go up. Again, they put glucose. And that baby was so young, she was pricked everywhere. Everywhere, as in even to the toes. They could prick her like every other five minutes to just check on the sugar levels. Mm -hmm. They did that for a day. At night, the baby was... And that, this time, she's on oxygen. Yeah. At night that day, she, that night she just became worse. Mm. And when I was just there alone, I, I called the nurse. Yeah. I'm like, why is the baby breathing like this? And she was like, I'm at a missy tree. Mm. As in, even me, I don't know why. Yeah. Why is? And she's also asking me, so why is the baby breathing like this? So the I'm baby like, was struggling you're asking, to yeah, the baby yeah. was struggling to breathe. She's like, I, I don't know why the baby is breathing, breathing like this. And. The doctors are not around. It was at night. Mm. Kampua, I would look at that baby. I, I think she was going and yeah. I would tell God. Mm -mm. Mm. You know, those ones you can't pray. Yeah. I would just tell God. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. That, those were my prayers that mm. time. I would tell God. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Until in the morning, yeah. she was booked for a scan. Yeah. When we went for the scan, the doctor again came and said she has bronchiolitis. Wow. They started administering that. But mm. at last time, the baby was worse. Yeah. Because she was, she, you could say she was struggling. Mm. She was struggling. And one of my friends, um, my pastor's wife, yes. came to visit. Yes. She came to visit that lunch hour. And, Immediately she saw my child and she was like, mm, this baby is not okay. Yeah. She's not supposed to be struggling to breathe mm -hmm. when it's, she's, she's in oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. The oxygen is supposed to help her breathe. Yeah. And she immediately called the nurse. Then she told the nurse, I need to see the doctor because yes. this child is not okay. Mm -hmm. She needs to be put under a machine. And yeah. it took some time and she she really worked so hard to yes. get the doctor. She even spoke to her, to him on phone. Mm -hmm. And when they talked, the doctor said he's coming. Okay. When he came, he was like, nah, he was telling now the nurse. Yes. If you see a baby behaving like this, just know the baby has choked. Oh. So we are like choked of what? Yeah. Anyway, so it says he needs, she needs to be put under a machine. Okay. And unfortunately, they don't have a machine to support the kid. Like a machine, like, like life support? I see, yeah, life support. She needs to be put on a life support and they didn't have it. So the, like, the next step is we refer you to Kenyatta mm. where you can get some help. Yes. So they start the process and they were de really delaying. Mm. At that point, my patients had gone. I, I was so disturbed because I could see the condition of the child is not okay. My pastor's wife, she mm. even made the arrangements at Kenyatta. Guys were waiting for us yes. that time. Yes. But here again, the I hospital is delaying with the accounts. You know that billing process. I know. Remember at some point I walked on the corridors and I told them, just give me my baby, yeah. I go. Yeah. I leave someone to clear the bill, mm -hmm. just let me go with my baby. Yeah. And later they organized and we go to Kenyatta. Okay. When we go to Kenyatta, at the corridors, mm -hmm. we get out and at the corridors we meet a nurse. Okay. And she asked this other nurse, what's wrong with the baby? And the baby say, the nurse says, the baby has diabetes. Yes. And that nurse was like, she just nodded her head and she was like, small babies don't have diabetes. This is sepsis. Oh my goodness. 
And that time she was on oxygen, she checks on the mask. Yeah. And she finds there's nothing coming in. What? There was nothing. The oxygen? The oxygen was not working. Oh my gosh. So they were just stuffing the baby. That's why the baby was yes. struggling. Yes, that's why she the baby was struggling. She was being suffocated, literally. Yeah, but that time I didn't know. I remember those terms very well. Now they came to, in my mind later, and she said, this thing is not working. She immediately fixed the baby on the corridors. Yeah. The oxygen. Yeah. And that's how our process started. We were admitted. They had now, actually, she was at a point of resuscitation. Yeah. They had to resuscitate her because I think I was just carrying a dead baby. Yeah. And they resuscitated her and admitted us for like 14 days. Mm. Initially, now they had to, because she got, she was swollen. Yeah. At some point, she was swollen because of the fluids she got at the other hospital, mm -hmm. which were not necessary. They yeah. had to remove that and now start treating yeah. the sepsis. Yes. And I remember when I was there, and I'm telling you, Kenyatta, mm -hmm. Kenyatta is not an, an easy place to be. Yeah. There you're sleeping with someone, mm -hmm. you know, like they share the beds. Yes. They share the beds and the next minute you turn, the mom is crying. Yeah. The baby has gone. Oh so you're like, I'm the next one. Oh dear. It was so, it was so scary. Yeah. So after like five days, I remember one day I was just holding my daughter like this and I had, I gave her to Lat and I saw she had that reflux. Oh, wow. oh my goodness, that was so exciting. <laughs> Finally. That was so exciting. And you know, all this time she was on tubes. Yes. She was feeding through the tube. I yes. would express the milk for her. And, yes. and I'm like, oh my goodness. I call the doctors and the nurses and I'm telling them, now she wants to breastfeed. Yes. They told me, give her time. Yeah. <laughs> give her time, <laughs> she will. Yes. So me, in my mind, while I was like, you guys remove this tube. Yes. This baby needs to breastfeed. <laughs> of course, that one took a day and yeah. the fourth day, the, 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 the following day she could breastfeed. Wow. A bit. Oh I my was Goodness. So happy. Yeah. I'd never experienced that yeah. since she I held her and yeah. that was the turn turn around. Yes. Of course, I fell ill when I was in the hospital. Yeah. And I had also to be taken care of. Yes. Yeah, but thank God after some time we were discharged mm -hmm. and the baby was okay. Okay. We oh went my home. Goodness. They didn't tell me anything. Yes. She told me the baby was discharged in good condition. Yes. She'll be fine. Yes. Yeah, we went home. Yeah, to now start your life. To, yeah, as... I was so happy now. That is sorted, you yes. know. Yes. What's, what's this beautiful <laughs> miracle baby's name? She's Naila. Naila. Naila Imani. Naila Imani. Yes. Okay, so mm. you and Naila have been discharged. As far as you know, you're fine. She's fine. Yes. And then what? Now, we, of course, we do the no more clinics, the monthly ones, yes. until six months. Okay. Until six months. And at around six months, all this time, I'm taking her to, I will, at Gertrude's Hospital. Yes. For clinics. Okay. Every month, yes. I was very consistent. Yes. Every month, every month, every month, they mm -hmm. check on everything. She's okay. Mm -hmm. Our weight was okay. Okay, good. She was growing so fast, and at six months, she developed, she developed something like a diaper rash. Okay, but it didn't look like a diaper. It, mm -hmm. it, it there were no rashes. Mm -hmm. It was uh, like she was losing some color, ah. some color, and we thought, ah, hey, this is more of. It's, it's not diaper rash. Okay. So I sought a specialist. And now when I went, uh, that doctor tells me she saw me on the corridors yes. waiting. Yeah. And she immediately knew the baby had an issue, okay. a problem. Yeah. But now when I went in, she was like, uh, just give me the history of this child. Yes. Uh, of course I did. Mm. The story I've told you. Yes. And she was like, yeah, I, I saw it. She could just tell she by looking at tell the baby. By looking at the baby. Mm. So she told me, anyway, tell me what brought you here. Yeah. So I told her, this baby has this, this, and this. And she was like, okay, this one, it looks like a diaper rush, mm. but I'll send you to a dermatologist. Okay. A 
a specialist. Yes. And so she told me, now let me deal with the issue that I saw. Is this babysitting? No. Head control? No. Yeah. Have you been going to clinics? Yes. So she was like, okay, fine. Now this child is, uh, she's low on calcium. Mm -hmm. And we need to put her on some supplements. Yes. Calcium and vitamin A or D. Okay. Vitamin D. Yeah. Calcium mm. supplements. Yes, yes. And now the, we started a process, like a monthly checkups. Okay. Reviews. And she told me, yeah, you can buy this and come after one month. Mm -hmm. So when we we did that for three months, mm -hmm. that was around two, maybe two, yeah. uh, September, September, October, November. November. Mm -hmm. In December, when we went for the next clinic, she was like, now I need to send you to an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, for what? She told me they need to do some exercises on, okay. the, on the child. Yeah. So me, I didn't know what is an occupational therapist. Of course, we book. She told me, go this, take this. You go and book an appointment. Still at KNH, I was seeing a doctor at private wing. Okay. So, but she sent me to the Kenyatta Hospital. Yes. So I made a booking. That was December. Mm -hmm. When we went, they did an assessment. Mm -hmm. First, they do an assessment, and they're like. Ah, this is good. Okay, fine. So now we'll do one session today. Yes. And now another next week. Then after that, we'll close for Christmas. Okay. So you resume in January. Yes. I'm like, resume what? What, what do we need to resume? Yeah. They're like, no, you know, these exercises we'll be doing like every other day. Okay. For how long? Yes, I was asking that. Yeah. They, but they don't tell you. Ah. They don't tell you yeah. because they know probably it could be a lifetime. Oh, dear. Me, I knew it was just two sessions, yes. then we are done, yeah. or one session and yes. we are done. Yeah. So we go for Christmas mm -hmm. and we come back and the process continues until today. Oh, my goodness. So from nine months. From nine months. Yes. And now Naila is how old? Naila is seven. Actually, she's about to turn eight she's in March. So did they explain to you mm. why she needed occupational therapy for, for a long time? At, at that moment, they didn't tell me. Okay. Even the doctor mm. didn't tell me that Naila had any condition. Yeah. As in, they never tell you. So when did you find out? When did you... Now, mm. I got to find out... After, of course, after, and we were so expectant that after every maybe three yes. months, yeah. six months, yeah. every one year yeah. she'll be, she'll cut her cake standing, as in we'll, I knew at some point she'll just be okay. Mm. But after two years, mm. that's when I realized, Ay, what's happening? Mm. As in, I was in so much, I had this thought of, Mm. what she could be suffering from. Yeah. But it, I didn't want to say yes to it. At I was in so much denial. denial. I was in so much denial mm. until when she was two years. Yeah. Now this time, mm. the same friend of mine who is a pastor's wife, yes. my pastor's wife, yes. visited and she told me there's a friend, mm. they've been together in some group, and she's been sharing about how she's been taking a child to India for some processes uh, who is similar to, who is having a similar condition with Naila. Mm -hmm. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, Naila doesn't have any condition. condition. Mm. What is she talking about? Yeah. So anyway, she books an appointment. She tells me, Faith, I would want us to go and visit that family with a few friends. Yes. And we just get to hear their story. We see yes. whether it, will some, it is something we can pick for Naila. Okay. So she fixed a date and we go mm. with some friends. And when we went there and I saw their daughter, mm -hmm. she's a daughter who was around, that time she was around 20 years. Oh, okay. 20 Look, years. An adult. And, an adult, yeah. Ah. She was an adult. And I'm like, I, Naila is not like this. Why did she tell me to come here? So what did you see in the... As in, of course, 
that child had cerebral palsy. Uh -huh. She had cerebral palsy and that is the one word that I had fought for so long. Yeah. I didn't want it to be in yeah. my vocabulary. Yeah, you're like, no, I'd I refused. can't relate to this. I can't relate to this. Mm. And I found she had cerebral palsy. And mm. I'm like, I, why did she bring me here? Mm -hmm. My life is not like this, mm. you know. Mm. Either, anyway, so she, we agreed and she happened to tell me the processes they did. So they told me there's a process called stem cell. Yeah. They do it in India. They have to do a PET scan. Yeah. They get to know. So she explained a bit of it. But mm -hmm. now she told me this team of India, yeah. from India, they are coming to Nairobi. Okay. We can, actually, we can book okay, and good. we go hear about it and mm -hmm. they'll explain to you everything, everything. It was within a week and we went. Mm -hmm. They hosted a program at Sankara and we went. Okay. When we went, now I got to meet the doctors and they, that's when they told me the real truth. Wow, which was? They told me now this child, because I went with Naila and yeah. they were like, it's delayed. Or oh, this time, me in my in my my terms were delayed milestone. Okay. I knew Naila had delayed milestones. Okay, which milestones so, were, were, was she delayed in? She was she delayed was in sitting. Yes. And of course, standing and walking. And, and she was already two years. Yes, yeah, she was already two years. And I knew probably with the therapy she'll pick up and all that. But now when we met the Indians, the Indian the doctor, doctors, mm. he, they told us, oh, yeah, this is delayed milestone, but cerebral palsy. Oh, dear. Um, the, the words you dreaded. The, the words I didn't want to hear. And mm. I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's just confirmed. Yeah. And But I told me for Naila it was mild. Mm. It was mild and could be corrected. Okay. With the same stem cell process. Yes. So we, they explained a bit about the stem cell. They told us when they go back to India, they'll book us for an appointment. Okay. We go there, they do the stem cell, and she should be fine yes. within six months. Okay. Um, of course, I went back home, and we are like, oh, okay. If there's a solution, <laughs> yeah. we better do it. Yeah. But now when we checked on the figures, they were just, too expensive. Hard, so expensive. Yeah. But now in my mind, I'm like, if I don't do this, mm. Naila might not walk. Mm. And just by knowing that there's an op an alternative, solution. That, an alternative solution that would really yeah. be into me. So you, so you do you feel like the, the that they gave you the news in black and white? Do you feel like it helped you accept the reality of the situation? It at did. That point? Yeah. It did. Yeah. It really did because that's not what we were hearing from our local doctors. Yeah. They never tell you anything. They never tell you why we are giving this child supplements. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. All why you're doing therapy? Yeah. They didn't tell you. They mm. don't tell you why you're doing therapy. Oh no. Actually, I tend to think by the mm. time they discharge me yeah. at 14 days, yes. the very first discharge, yes. they should have told me at least with Something. this condition because at that point they knew the child had got a brain damage because, because of, of the lack of oxygen. Mm. That's where it all began. So they, at least they should have prepared me and told me that we'll have some delays in this and this and this, mm. but I was not told. Yeah. And so, of course, now we prepared for India. Yeah. We brought up people together. A friend mm. of mine really pushed me yeah. and she told me, Faith, we can do this. Yeah. Let's do this yeah. and let's put up a group and mm. look for fans. Yeah. And it happened, mm. surprisingly, as I was telling you in the movie some <laughs> two, few minutes ago, yes. <laughs> that you even contributed. And Faith. it's funny that you didn't know I you were contributing for Naila. Oh yes. my goodness. Mm. Yeah. So by God's grace, we got mm. all that we needed. Yeah. But now, something funny when I got everything and things were moving so smooth, mm. I was like, I... Because now it hit me when we wanted to get an authorization letter yeah. from the local doctors. You know, by the, before you go to India yeah. to seek further med medication, uh, sorry, yeah. 
you have to be get a referral okay, from, from here, a doctor here, yeah, from a doctor here, mm -hmm. and our visits to the many neurologists that we had, yeah. They were like, they were not buying that idea of stem cell. They were like, it doesn't work. Yes. And we, I can't get you a letter. Mm. We tried a few. I remember there's a time we had to wait for one up to midnight. Oh, dear. A long gong road and yeah. just to see him. Mm -hmm. And after all that waiting, he could not recommend. Oh, no. The treatment. Oh, no. Yeah, it was that, now that's when I was like, oh my goodness, is this process safe mm. for my child? Mm. And now I was debating. And at that point, yeah. I've already got the funds. Yeah. I have everything set yeah. Yeah. and I can't get a referral letter from the local doctors. Mm. And I had this friend who helped us get one. Okay. We helped us get one. Yeah. And, but I, that time I was really fighting mm. to make the decision of going. Okay. In as much as I was preparing, <laughs> you're also struggling. In, with yeah, it. I was still struggling because ah. I didn't know whether it might harm the child. Yeah, whether it was safe. Oh, what if dear. I go and then I don't come back with the baby? Yeah, there were so many things which were running in my mind. Mm. But I remember at one point I just prayed and I told God, "This child belongs to you." Yes, you gave me this child and I give you. Yeah. You've provided, yeah. if you didn't want us to go, you would not have provided. Yeah. At some point I was asking even God, why did you provide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, of course it's not my money. If it was my money, I would have changed to another account. Yes. Or just decided to leave it there. Yeah. But it wasn't my money. Yeah. And I'm like, God, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go and I'll go by faith. Mm -hmm. We get to India and... Before they do the process, the following day, they have to, like, record. Yes. They do a recording. Okay. It's like they'll hold you accountable yeah. because you have you've agreed to the process. Yeah. Again, it clicks me. Why are they recording? Yes. Kwani, it's not safe or yes. what? Yes. Anyway, I continue. Pre I was in a fight, in a fighting mood. Yeah. I fought and I told God, Nyla is in your hands. Yeah. Even that day she went to the theater room and mm. they did the process. Mm -hmm. I was just praying. Yeah. Just praising and telling God you're in charge, you're in charge. Yeah, we did the process and came back. Yes. Came back. Of course, so excited that within six months Nyla will be walking. Okay, yeah. And actually by the time, because of the intense therapy they have there. Yeah. When we go to the airport, yeah. my family members tells me that yeah. they thought Naila was walking. Oh. <laughs> because she was so flexible. Yes. And so we got to the airport mm -hmm. on arrival and my family members were so excited yeah. that Naila is walking. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They tell me she was so energetic. Oh, yeah. They almost put her down to oh. walk. Because, <laughs> you know, that was everyone's expectation. Yes. I mean, they knew maybe it's a one touch. A miracle. A miracle pub, overnight. Yeah, yes. overnight. Mm. And, yeah, that, of course, she was not walking. Yeah. But the therapy there is quite intense. Mm -hmm. Actually, as a parent, you don't want to be there when they are doing the sessions. It was hard quite, to watch. It's hard to watch. That yeah. baby would cry throughout, throughout. Yeah. And it's not something easy. They're, they're really straight. Yeah. They stretch the child. Mm. And yeah, it, it's for their good. Yeah. It's for yeah. their good. But yeah. uh, so we come, yeah. wait for six. Of course, we've come with a whole bag of medications. Yes. And we are told after six months, we'll see some good change. Yes. We take our six months. Okay. We finish the medication. So initially they told us after, they're supposed to do like two cycles okay. of stem cell. Okay. And we finish after six months, they're mm -hmm. supposed to repeat. Okay. So we finish the medication, mm -hmm. six months. Mm. Not seeing anything. No change. No change. Mm. She's still there. You just tell you, keep keep doing the exercises. Mm. Make sure you keep doing the exercises, giving her medication. Yes. And by six months, we should be fine. Yeah. Six months comes and... No. They lie still. Yeah. So you try to not have some change. Yeah. And you... 
for me, I settled on maybe coordination. Yes. Which I don't know what to mean that time. <laughs> Yes, I thought maybe this thing worked on her coordination. Yes. As in she would know something is there, she could Aww. stretch her hand and Yeah, pick. you really wanted to see yes. some, I, I, something not what, yes, yes, that's not what I was looking for. Yeah, so six months and we are supposed to go back. But this time I told God. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going back. Yeah. I'm not going back. Mm. And we'll work with whatever is. Yeah, locally. Yeah. Of course, all that time we are still on weekly therapies. Yes. Yeah, and um, we wait. Mm. We like the third birthday in Ella will be, we'll yeah. cut our cake while standing. Mm. It comes. Yeah. She's still there. Yeah. Fourth, fifth, until yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. But now we continue the therapy mm -hmm. sessions. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. But I think after India, that's when I said yes mm. to our condition. Yes. And I told God, give mm. me the grace, which he has yeah. till today. Yeah. I count it as a joy. Yeah. And I call myself a special parent. Yeah. Special mother. You not are not a special, special child. Yes. Not a mother, yeah. a special mother. A special mother. Yes. Uh -huh. That's what I call myself. Uh -huh. mm. Wow, Faith. So um, Naila is seven. She says she's seven, going to eight. Yes, she's going to eight. She's not able to walk. She's not able to walk. So you, she, she does still... she use a wheelchair? Naila is not. Now that's the other next fear. Okay. That has been my greatest fear, mm. which I'm still dealing with. Yeah. Because at the end, she still needs to be mobile. Yes. Yeah, but... Mm -hmm. She's been on a stroller, okay. which currently she's outgrown. Yes. Yeah. So I've still not got a breakthrough. Yeah. On the wheelchair. Okay. Yes. Is she in school? Naila, she is not in school. Mm -hmm. We've been, we've tried a home program, yes. homeschooling, mm -hmm. but it's not consistent. So mm -hmm. currently. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're still you're still, I'm still figuring, figuring the out, journey. Yes, because the one of the most challenges I've had the schools I have in my hood. Yeah. They don't have accommodate special needs children. Okay. Yes, or rather they don't have a facility. You find their schools which do not have even a ram. Ramps, yes. They don't have rams. They don't have special needs teacher. Yeah. So if they were to take her, mm. unless now they, I get a shadow teacher. Okay. We'll just be there focus with her. On her yeah. Yes, we'll just focus on her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I'm still trusting God mm. for an open door because one funny thing with Naila, she understands. Mm. everything. Mm -hmm. Her intellectuals were not affected. Okay. It's only the motor skills. Okay, she speaks. Yeah, the mobility. Yeah. She can speak a mm -hmm. few words, uh -huh. but there's a way she communicates okay. and we understand. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's mm. beautiful. She's very smart. Yeah. You give her your phone and she'll operate. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So she yeah. does understand. She, it. Understanding, she does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've had so many challenges with people when they yeah. see me carrying her. Yes. And they're like, why are you carrying her? Okay. Just let her walk. Yeah, you can have a big girl, big no. baby. Yeah, there's a big baby. Yeah. And you know, because I have a son, yes. they're like, the son is walking. Yes. And why, why are you carrying the big oh. girl? Yeah. You don't have words to tell people. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's so important what you're, you know, the things that you're bringing out because mm. we make assumptions when we see people yes. and we see situations that we don't understand. We, don't understand we speak us. and mm. we don't know what that situation is. Mm. You know that someone would wonder, why are you carrying such a big mm -hmm. baby? Mm. But they don't, know they don't know what the situation Actually, is. No. There's one who insisted and I told them, she, she, I know why, as yeah. in you don't have a, an answer to tell yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And I think we should we should honestly just let people parent mm. the way that is best for them because Correct. they and everybody understands mm. what their situation is, what their yes. need is. Yes. You know, even to something as basic as I know a lot of mothers with little babies are usually shame. Mm. You know, we go to church and mm. because I am still not comfortable. Yeah with the Sunday school because yeah. there's no one to take care of yes. her. I have to go to the main service with her. Yes. And one of my friends came and told me the yeah. hubby was asking her, mm. you tell your friend to take the baby to Sunday school. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
and I'm like, does she does he know mm. the condition of Nana? She was like, no. That's when I told him. Yeah. 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 Mm. And uh, thank God for my child. Actually, the other day they launched. Yeah. a sensory class oh. where they'll be taking care of special needs That's children. That's amazing. Yes. And maybe that is something that needs to happen in more Correct. churches and uh, more that communities. That was so thoughtful of them. Yeah. I, prob- I was telling Naila mm. on Sunday, maybe yeah. they have seen us so yeah. many times. They're like, <laughs> why can't you go to Sunday school? <laughs> Until they, it's only that they can't tell us. <laughs> well, that means that Naila has done a good job yes. in creating a space. She does. Yes. She does. She goes to the church and she's so excited when people, we are told to stand and she yeah. wants to stand yeah, yeah. and she's become so tall. Yeah. She's so tall and oh. of course you you'd not miss out yeah. on seeing her. Yeah. Yes. Mm. You know, Faith, um, you know, one of the things I would say, in, even as a mother, because there are times I have a boy who's now, uh, he's, he, he's four and a half. Yes. And um, I know situations where if he's had an injury or whatever, I'll pick him up like he's a newborn baby mm. and I'll carry him. Yes. There's a strength that as mothers, your arms are given strength that Correct. even if Nyla was 15, you'd yes. still carry her like a, yes. you know, and mm. I pray for more strength in your Thank arms, you. but also in your heart. Thank you. Because I, I, I imagine that in as much as you've accepted it, you're still navigating mm. and that you still have moments when someone mm. says something that is insensitive, mm. out of not knowing and out of yes. assuming, mm. um, th- th- there's still things that get said to you that make you feel a certain way. Mm. Um, I can imagine there's certain times you feel left out of certain mm. communities yeah, because correct. maybe your child is not able to do certain things. Yes. Um, but this, this, what you're sharing about your experience with Nyla is so important because when you talk of even schools not having facilities mm. like ramps, yes. I think that should be in every school. Mm. You know, it shouldn't be uh, very special schools that have mm. facilities like that. I yeah. think we should, all of us should have that thought in mind that there mm. could be a child who's unable to do this, who needs to move around differently Correct. than other children. Mm. Um, I, I feel like even in our public schools, it shouldn't yes. just be in the private schools that are so expensive, yeah. that even our public schools can have those facilities, Correct. those shadow teachers that you're talking yes. about. Mm. If if this child needs a little more assistance, there's someone who can do that. Mm. So that even you as a mother real, you mm. feel mm. and, and you, you realize that your child is included and your Correct. child, Nyla is an important child in our society yeah. she is mm-hmm. you know and she's she's playing a very vital role mm-hmm. in our society correct um what do you where do you feel you've drawn the most strength as you've mothered Nyla mm-hmm. um and you have you mentioned that you have another son who's younger yes. as a mother mm-hmm. where do you feel that you have drawn the most strength um from? where I've drawn the most strength is one when I said yes that this is Nyla. When I said, mm. yes, yeah. Nyla is like this. Yes. And she's mine. Yes. And yeah, I just decided to love on her. And I told God, there's nowhere I went wrong. Mm-hmm. As in, like I told you, I had the best pregnancy. Yes. The best pregnancy. And I didn't have any complications. And I will. Everything was okay. Mm. But since God, you chose this for me and you mm. saw me fit, yeah. I said yes. Yes. And I told God, carry me through. Yeah. And that's where I draw my strength. Yeah. There are those low moments, but again, you tell God, mm. I'm with you in this. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I left everything to God yeah. from the day I said yes. Mm-hmm. And I can attest to you, God has been so. So, so faithful. Yeah. yeah. So faithful in yeah. terms of provision. Mm-hmm. So faithful in terms of his grace. Yes. And he's been there for us. Mm-hmm. Nela has had a few challenges, yeah. health challenges. Mm-hmm. And I believe she's still in God's hands. Yes, she she's. Is. And God gave me that child. And I didn't know that you can get a baby and they don't breastfeed. Yeah. That was so strange. Yeah. I didn't know me. I knew. Actually, when I checked in, mm. I told my family, you guys mm. come for the baby tomorrow. Yes. I was so excited. Yeah. I knew I would just push and yeah. the baby is here. Yeah. yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah. But I've come to appreciate that God is a giver of life. Yes. 
And in everything that happens, happens with a reason. Mm. And since he has the reason, yeah. he'll give you the grace for that season. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And again, yeah. of course, I've got some a lot of strength and support from my family. Mm -hmm. And very few close friends yeah. because um, I tend to be an introvert. Yes, <laughs> so the, I can relate to I'm that. I'm sure <laughs> today will be a, a surprising day for so many. Yeah. No one knows I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, is that, is that faith? <laughs> she looks familiar. No, I know. I, I, my friends, yeah. just forgive me. <laughs> forgive me in advance because, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's me. I mean, I, I'm glad that you've been, you, you even said yes to coming here because mm -hmm. it's so brave of you to do that. And I think this is also a way of you letting your community in because sometimes mm. people don't even know how to help, how to step in mm. when they don't know what our yes, story yes, is, yes, you yes. know. Mm. Um, so even as you're telling your friends, please forgive me. Mm. I, I, I pray that they hear you with a different yes, ear yes. And, and that they see that you, you've been, I mean, you have navigated. This mm. is a very heavy journey that you've navigated. Yeah. and you've done it with so much grace you have mm. a smile on your face mm. um not to mean that you've not had difficult moments but just that you're yes. you're up and you're going mm -hmm. and your being here is also telling another woman another parent that um it's not the end of the world correct. your child correct has one uh, a special need mm. or whatever kind mm. Um, and the feelings that you've articulated so well are valid from the point where you are in denial for nearly mm. two years. Yes. And like, there's nothing wrong with my child. Mm. In fact, I don't even know why you brought me to see this as <laughs> a know. child because I can't relate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, sure. it's denial. But yes. I see, I, I mm. completely see how as a mom, I would probably be in the same place of, no, mm. my child is fine. Yes. Um, because it's a hard thing to accept. Correct. But then the power of you mm. saying, I said yes, yes to this being the situation. Mm. I said yes to Nyla being mine and she's yeah. perfect the way she Correct. is. Mm. That is so powerful. Mm. Um, just that power of accepting mm. our journey, accepting Correct. our story, mm. because then we're able to navigate it mm. with wisdom, with mm. knowledge, mm. with the right help. Um, so Faith, I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful to you for sharing your heart and sharing your life with us, mm. uh, for sharing a little bit of Nyla with us. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm sure the people who are watching are like, we, we feel like we, we know, we feel like we love her, you know? Yeah, um, thank you. And, and thank you for m letting other people know that it's okay. Yeah. It is okay, you know, even if your journey started in, and this is what we say, even as we're doing being Kambua, that your motherhood journey can start in one way mm -hmm. and then it turns it takes a completely different curve so what do you do mm -hmm. when a curveball is thrown at you do you give up or do you take it and ask god okay i don't know what to do but then he gives you the grace on what to do mm -hmm. yeah so um I, I, I pray, as I've said, I pray, I pray for strength of heart, you. of your Thank arms, you. joy, Thank resources, you. everything you. that you need, yes. um, that you will have a surplus of those things. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I pray that we, as a, as a society, that we continue to be sensitized. Thank you for highlighting that there was, we have to call it what it was, uh, mm -hmm. that there was negligence on yes. your journey. Yeah. Um, because had she not been deprived of oxygen, yes, this correct. would not have happened. Mm -hmm. And that there are many parents who this is their story, that there was negligence somewhere. And I, you know, as I say, I, I appreciate our medical people, our doctors, our nurses. Uh, but we also have to admit that there are moments where maybe because they're overwhelmed, tired, I mm. don't know, uh, that there are moments where there's negligence mm. or where the, you're like, it's a first time mom. She's mm. just making a big fuss over nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, usually I think a, a mother can say something is not right. I feel something is not right. If you could mm. just pay attention, mm. then some of these stories would be less and less, would hear less mm. and less of these stories. Mm. But um, I want to say thank you to our people, our family of being Kambua for just telling, because I asked people, what stories do you want to hear? And, they, and some of the parents said, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, I want to hear from a mom who, a special mom, you thought you called yourself. I want to hear from a special mom what that is like. So thank you for coming here to just give life to somebody else's faith. Um, and thank you again. Keep your messages coming. Let me know what faith has shared with you today that has resonated with you. That thing that she has said that you've said, this one is the reason why I'm going to keep moving forward boldly, courageously, 
Or if you just want to drop a word of encouragement for her, please go ahead and do that. She'll be reading the comments and um, also suggestions of who else you would like me to bring on here on Being Kambua. It could be yourself. You can drop me an email, uh, beingkambua at gmail.com. But thank you so much for being a part of this episode. I know these episodes can sometimes be heavy. Um, so if you need to consume it in bits, go ahead and do that. But share it with your community. Share it why, why, widely. And um, let us continue to journey together. Sante sana and catch you next time. Bye-bye. She asked me, she said, have you lost any, did, did, did your water break? I'm like, no, my water did not break. Have you been, uh, has your body been leaking? I'm like, no, not that I have noticed. And I was so confused because now I'm like, what, what did I miss? And how did I miss that? You know, it's just like, because when the fluid is not there, the movement gets restricted and, you know, everything else gets affected. I, I, I was just, I was so confused. And she said, well, um, this baby needs to come out today. 